Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to uh, finish up lecture 13. This is part 2 and we're going to look at types of reactions. We've looked at how to balance them and now we're going to look at the different types. There are too many reactions to remember them all by memory, but reactions fall into different categories and we're going to look at the five main types. When you know the type of reaction you'll be able to predict the products and for some we'll be able to predict whether they'll happen at all. You must recognize the types of reactions by the reactants. So let's get started. First one is combination reactions. To combine means to put things together. So you recognize it by two elements or compounds combining to make one compound. This is also called a synthesis reaction. Remember that the first step is to write the formula and then balance it. If you're combining two compounds and the question tells you it is a synthesis or a combination reaction, it will make one product. So let's take a look at some examples. We're going to write and balance these two equations. So calcium plus chlorine gives us calcium chloride. We know that that's balanced and we know that this is a synthesis reaction. In the other synthesis reaction we would get Fe plus O2 gives us FeO so in order to balance that, we need to have a 2 coefficient in front of the Fe on the reactant side and a 2 in front of FeO. Decomposition reactions means to fall apart. So run reactant falls apart into two or more elements or compounds. An example would be sodium chloride yielding sodium plus chlorine or calcium carbonate yielding calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. You can predict the products if it's a binary compound, which means it's made up of only two elements, because this is going to fall apart into its separate elements. So let's take a look at binary decomposition. So water would decompose into hydrogen plus oxygen. Similarly, similarly mercury 2 oxide would decompose into mercury and oxygen. When you have more than two elements, for example, you've got nickel or nitrogen, iodine, carbon, and oxygen in the first one, you'll have to be given one of the products because otherwise you don't know where to go. So this one I give you NiO so you know that what's left is carbon dioxide. Similarly, the carbonic acid that we have here would decompose into carbon dioxide and water because that's what's left. Single replacement or displacement reactions happen when one element replaces another. The reactant has to be an element and a compound in order co to qualify for this type of reaction. Products will be a different element and a different compound. So examples would be sodium plus potassium chloride would give you potassium plus sodium chloride or fluorine plus lithium chloride would give you lithium fluoride plus chloride and chlorine gas. Keep in mind that the rules of electronegativities apply. So metals replace metals and hydrogen. For example, aluminum plus copper to sulfate would give you aluminum sulfate plus copper. Zinc and sulfuric acid would give you zinc hydrogen sulfide, sulfate, plus hydrogen gas. Because the, the hydrogen is acting like a metal, so the zinc is going to replace the hydrogen. And then lead plus potassium chloride will not proceed because of the electronegativity rules. If the electronegativity is backwards, you can't get it to run. Also for single replacement reactions, remember that water is more like hydrogen plus a hydroxide ion. So sodium plus water would give us sodium hydroxide plus hydrogen gas. Similarly, nonmetals can replace other nonmetals, but this is limited to the halogens. So for example, fluorine plus hydrochloric acid would give you hydrofluoric acid plus chlorine, but bromine plus potassium chloride 
would not proceed because potassium is not another halogen. The high, higher electronegativity is what determines the reaction will proceed or not. And again, remember the halogens have the highest electronegativity. So when we have single replacements, let's take a look and practice with this. So we have aluminum plus hydrochloric acid. That would give us aluminum 3 chloride. So that's AlCl3 plus hydrogen gas. However, iron plus copper 2 sulfate would not proceed because copper 2 sulfate is higher on the electronegativity scale. Double replacement reactions happen when two things replace each other. So reactants must either be two ionic compounds or two acids. This usually happens in aqueous solutions. So what happens here is that you have the positive ions changing place and then you balance the charges. So in other words, in this reaction, the sodium and iron will flip. The double replacement uh, reactions only happen if one of the products either doesn't dissolve in water and forms a solid, which means it precipitates out, it's a gas that bubbles out, or is a covalent compound, which is usually water. So we have sodium hydroxide plus iron 3 chloride. We, add, we, flip the, um, we flip the metals, but remember you've got iron 3 with a 3 plus and hydroxide has a minus 1. So you have to balance those two uh, charges as well. Polyatomics won't change form from side to side, but they move as a unit. So always assume with a double replacement reaction that all reactions will take place because there's no way to really predict if they won't proceed or not. So you're going to assume that they do. So let's take a look at these practice examples. Calcium chloride plus sodium hydroxide would give you calcium hydroxide, which is CaOH2, plus NaCl. These last three I want you to practice on your own um, and check with me to make sure that you've answered it correctly because um, this is one of those that you really, really need to practice with this material in order to understand it. So of the four types we've covered so far, we're going to say E equals element and C equals compound. So the combination or synthesis reactions is element plus element. Remember, we're only looking at the reactants. That's how you recognize these reaction types. The decomposition starts with a compound only. The single replacement is an element plus a compound, and the double replacement is a compound plus a compound. The final type is combustion reactions. Combustion happens when a compound composed only of carbon, hydrogen, and sometimes oxygen is reacted with oxygen. If the combustion is complete, the products will be carbon dioxide plus water. If the combustion is incomplete, the products will be carbon monoxide and water, or just C and H2O, so just carbon and water. Oxygen will always be the second, second reactant in a combustion reactant action, so I don't actually have to tell you that. So we're going to take C4H10. So we know that we combine it with oxygen, and that's, it says it's complete combustion, so that gives us carbon dioxide plus water. What we need to do then is balance our reaction, and so this is going to be the balanced reaction for it. So the incomplete combustion of, of this um, butane, which is what this is, C4H10 is butane, the incomplete combustion, remember, gives us carbon monoxide plus water. So it would be 2C4H10 plus 9O2 gives us 8CO plus 10H2O. Remember, complete combustions mean that we react it with water and we get um, carbon dioxide and water. So glucose, C6H12O6, plus oxygen, 6O2s, gives us 6CO2 plus 6H2O. Those of you who have gone through my biology class should know this one ad nauseum. 
and then the incomplete combustion here would give us carbon monoxide plus water. So it's C2H6O plus 2O2 gives us two COs plus three H2Os. Okay, this is material that you definitely need to practice, so make sure that you do so. If you have any questions, see me during office hours or send me an email. Have a great day.